Your reaction, sir? Well, first of all, welcome back, Megan, and, 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 and truly is sad, uh, the loss of life over in Afghanistan. There's no doubt about it, which makes what we're talking about here in America just all that much more uh, important, that we're in a battle for freedom for this country. And we have a president who we just saw is continuing this charade of blaming every person and every entity and everything under the sun for the situation that we're in. We have a president who has not been serious about the promises that he made to the American people, which was number one. He said that he would cut the deficit in half by the end of his first term. What did he do? He introduced the biggest structural deficit in the history of America. When it's come to a budget, have the, have the Democrats introduced the budget in the past 840 days? No. The Democrats haven't introduced anything. The Republicans are trying to lead, Megan, in this country. We passed not one, but two uh, pro two bills to address this uh, this debt issue. We passed a budget, and what did they do? They vilified Paul Ryan because he's trying to make Medicare sustainable for future generations while tackling head-on the real issues in this country affecting our debt and our deficits. And what did he do? Now he comes back and he's begging the Secretary of the Treasury, Tim Geithner, to stay on the job after Tim Geithner promised America and the world that what S&P did would never happen. He did that in April, and now the president is begging him to stay. This is a president, Megan, who is in love with press conferences, speeches. He's in love with campaigning. He's going to fundraisers tonight, and he can get on TV, just as he just did right now, and he can deliver very good press conferences, very good remarks. But what he's not good at is following through for the American people and being the leader of the free world which is what everybody is begging from this president, to start leading America to the promised land again, and look what he's doing. I, is it, is it I, that I, he's not leading? Is it that he's not leading or he's not leading in the direction you like? Because, you know, Standard & Poor's he, made clear that one of the issues that led to the downgrade was the political gridlock in Washington. They didn't like what they saw over the past couple of months, and they don't think that the parties can get along and resolve it. Is that an unfair conclusion? by Standard & Poor's, and if it is not, aren't both sides to blame? Well, I mean, certainly, there, you know, over the years, uh, I'm, I'm, no one is blameless, but certainly over the past two years, it's the policies of Barack Obama. Now, this is not just political partisanship. This is not just, look, the economy is in a tank, and therefore it's all Barack Obama's fault. We're not saying that. But it's the policies that Barack Obama has put in place Megan, that has that launched us into this direction. No one, not no one, but 65 percent, 70 percent of Americans didn't want Obamacare. They didn't want a two and a half trillion dollar down payment for government-run health care. They didn't want a stimulus bill that cost a trillion dollars. Now we've lost two and a half million jobs uh, since that program. It's the policies of Barack Obama. It's his inaction. It's his obsession with campaigning instead of getting things done. And it's the Democrats not delivering a budget, playing this game of rope-a-dope, which means every time the Republicans try to address these issues, they try to vilify every single Republican. They're launching an ad today, as you know, in Iowa, trying to vilify Paul Ryan and any Republican that tries to do anything to get our Medicare and our entitlements under, under control. And what does the president do now after we're, we're heading toward under 11,000 points on the Dow? Now he's saying, well, maybe we need to do something about Medicare. Well, no kidding. We've been talking about that for now three years. How, how, does, instead, this, how does this play, Mr. Priebus, politically? How does this play going into a year in which you know, we're in a countdown now to the next presidential election? Sure. Uh, this obviously happened on President Obama's watch, and, and people will argue about whether you can pin it on him and Democrats in general or not. Obviously, you have an opinion on it, but how do you plan, what do you plan on doing with this politically? Well, I mean, first of all, this is serious. I mean, this is not about political games. But <clears throat> I think the people in charge need to be held responsible. Uh, the fish rots at the head. We've got a president who's not engaged. Now, he's engaged with press conference and speeches. But I'd remind your viewers that press conference and speeches don't create policies uh, that, the, that the Congress can actually vote on. Now he's said, I'm going to come up with some ideas. I'm going to present them. He said that at a speech. Uh, two months ago and nothing came out of the White House. We still haven't seen any specifics from this president. So how it plays out, people are going to be asking themselves a question, Megan, and that is, are we better off today than we were three or four years ago? And the answer to that is, heck no, we're not. And has this president fulfilled his promises to the American people 
when it comes to the debt, the deficit, jobs, the economy? The answer to all of those questions are no. And, uh, you know, for the sake of our economy, for the sake of our country, we need to make Barack Obama one-term president and start getting this, this, our country back in shape again. Ryan's Priebus, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it, sir.